Today, we're going to look at Lesson 2, and that's Section 1.3 in your textbook, and this goes along with Homework 2 in Math XL. Today's learning objective or I can statement is I can write, evaluate, and simplify expressions. So remember, you should be in your composition notebook. You should be taking notes along with me. Um, remember, if I write it, you can write it down. Um, and just remember, I am going to go a lot faster in the video than I would in person because you can pause, rewind, do what you need to do on your own. So don't be intimidated if I go too fast. It's okay, I will not do that in person. Also today, I will be asking you to pause the video and try some examples on your own and then come back and check your answers with me. So please do that. Um, if you try it on your own, it will help you um, in the long run. It'll help you learn it better. Um, but a lot of what we're gonna do today is still a review. The first um, unit of Algebra 2 is really just reviewing stuff that you did back in Algebra 1. So um, it shouldn't be too bad. Our I can statement has three different parts today, writing, evaluating, and simplifying. We're going to start with writing expressions. And if we're going to write some expressions, we need to know words that mean your operations or operation words. For addition, we have add, sum, plus, total, increase, more, more than, and all together. Now, if we were in person, we could probably brainstorm a lot more words that can mean addition. But this list should be plenty for our practice and our notes today. For subtraction, we have subtract, minus, difference, take away, decrease, less, and less than. Okay, and again, I know we could come up with some other words for subtraction, but this will be fine for today. For multiplication, we have product, times, multiply, per, of, twice, double, triple, and then I'll put etc. in parentheses because we could keep going on that pattern. We could say quadruple, quintuple, etc., etc., um, but usually after triple, it'll just say the number like four, five, six, whatever. For division, we have quotient, divide, split, fraction distribute evenly, into, half, third, and again, I put etc. there because we could keep going. Fourths, fifths, sixths, sevenths, on and on and on. But usually, like I said before, after third, um, it's usually just the number or they use a different phrase. So those are the four operations that you need to know um, other words for. And something we need to remember when we're writing expressions, something super, super basic, when we're talking about division and subtraction, order matters. We know that 5 minus 3 is different than 3 minus 5, or 20 divided by 4 is different than 4 divided by 20. So when you're doing subtraction and division, when you're writing expressions, the order absolutely matters. So pay close attention to that. Addition and multiplication, we talked about in our properties in lesson one, the order doesn't matter across addition and multiplication. You're still going to get the same answer, but you won't with subtraction and division. So now would be a really good time to pause the video. Make sure you have all of those words written down, you're going to need them for the examples that we do and your assignment in Math XL. So take just a second, make sure you have all of those written down. Now, when you're writing phrases and expressions, it's pretty straightforward. You're just going to write them down in whatever order it says, unless it says less than. If it says less than, it kind of messes things up and turns things around. For example, if I give you 4 less x, then we can just write it in order. It does not say less than. So we have 4 less means subtract, and we're subtracting x. So we have 4, we're taking away x. However, if we have 4 less than x, it turns everything around. So if it 
says for less than x, we're going to start with x. Less than means subtract, and then we have 4. And we do that because in order as, for us to know or have 4 less than x, we have to know what x is first. If I was to say, you have 4 cookies less than me, before we can figure out how many cookies you have, you have to know how many I have. Um, and I know that's a silly example, and this can be really hard to comprehend and understand, um, but we just have to do our best with it. The easiest thing to do is just to remember, if it says less than, flip the order around. Now, we're going to practice going from a phrase to an expression. So I've given you some phrases, and we're going to turn those into expressions. So we're going to have numbers, variables, and math symbols. I'm going to do number one with you, and then we'll go from there. So number one, we have x plus 4. So it does not say less than, so we're just going to go in order. x plus means addition, and we're adding 4. That's the answer. Now, since it's addition, you could do 4 plus x if you wanted to, and it would be the exact same thing. Now, what I want you to do is pause the video. I want you to try the rest of the examples, write out an expression that you think works for that phrase, and then we'll come back together and check our answers when you're finished. So pause and give it a try. Okay, hopefully you tried those examples to see what you got. Number two, three more than twice x. It doesn't say less than, we can just go in order. So three more than, so that's three. More than is plus twice x, twice. That means multiplication, and what are we multiplying by? Two, so two x. Again, that's addition. You could turn it around if you wanted to. You could say 2x plus 3, and it would be the same thing. Now, number three, half the difference of x and 5. So first we have the word half. Half is under division, and if we have something, we're dividing it by 2. So half the difference. We know a difference is subtraction. So divide subtraction by 2. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense because we wouldn't write something like this. We wouldn't say minus divided by 2 or minus over 2. We wouldn't say something like that and leave it as it is. So that's a hint that we need something else. We need to throw in something to make it make sense. And that something we're going to throw in is a set of parentheses. So we are dividing something by 2. So I am going to go ahead and put a fraction line and 2. But what am I dividing or what am I going to have on top? We have the difference of x and 5. We said difference is subtraction. Order matters in subtraction. So we have to go in order. x minus 5. Now, you can put that in parentheses if you want to. You can leave it as x minus 5 over 2. Either of those work. As long as you have this quantity on top and this number on the bottom. Okay. Number 4, we have the product of 6 and the sum of y and a. That one sounds very similar to number 3. We have the product of a number and the sum. Again, we wouldn't do 6 times a plus sign. So there's another hint that we might need to throw in some parentheses or turn something into a quantity. So we know product is multiplication, so we're multiplying 6 and the sum. I'm going to throw in some parentheses, so I have 6 times the quantity. And we're adding y and 8. So I'm going to say y plus 8. You could switch that and do 8 plus y. It would mean the same thing. Now, some of you are going to be tempted to do the distributive property. There's no need to do that here. Just leave it as this expression. That's perfectly fine. Now, number five is more of a real-life application problem. You have some like this in your practice assignment. 
Sam had $300, but he was spending $15 per week. So he has $300 and spending. So spending, we didn't write that in our list, but let's just think about it logically. If we're spending money, are we adding money in or are we taking money out? We're taking money out, so that would be subtraction. And we're losing $15 per week. So we're not just losing $15, we're losing $15 every single week. So we're going to subtract 15 per, per is up there in our list under multiplication, so we're multiplying, and we need something to represent weeks or a week. I think W is a great variable there. Um, you can use whichever one you want to, you can use an X or whatever. But we have 300 minus 15W. That's $300 minus $15 each week. Okay, so hopefully you got cl answers close to that, or if you didn't get those answers, hopefully you see um, why these are correct and what you did wrong. Now we're going to switch gears just a little bit. We're going to go backwards. I've given you three expressions, and I want you to turn those into a phrase. So I'm not going to do one with you. I just want you to pause and write out a phrase. You can be as basic as writing it out exactly how you would say it with words, or you can be creative and throw in some different terms, and you can make it sound as complicated as you want to. Um, but that's up to you. So take just a second, pause the video, write down the phrase for each of those expressions, and then we'll come back and check our answers. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to give those a try. I am going to give you the phrases that I would use, but just know your phrases could still be correct and not be what I wrote down. You and half the class could all have different variations of a phrase that works. So if I don't write down the same thing you did, that doesn't mean you have to erase it, okay? The answers can vary for these. Now, a really easy way to do this one is eight times Y. That's how a lot of you would say it, eight times Y. But I'm gonna write down the product of eight and Y. Okay, the next one, you could do really basic, 2 times x minus 7, the difference of 2 times x and 7. Um, I'm going to get a little bit creative. I'm going to say 7 less than 2 times x. Okay, and then the last one, we have some parentheses, so you can decide how you want to denote that quantity in your phrase. I'm going to say four times the difference of x and 6. And it's important that I put the x and the 6 in order here um, because order matters with subtraction. Okay, so hopefully you have phrases close to that. In your assignment, you are going to have to go from phrase to expression, and I think that you might have to go from expression back to phrase as well. But you, this should not be brand new information to you, so um, I'm thinking that you guys will be just fine. Okay, now we're going to switch gears, and we're going to move to the next portion of the lesson, which is evaluating expressions. This is not new content for you. You've been evaluating expressions for quite some time now. So when we evaluate an expression, we're substituting a number for each variable and simplifying. And remember, when we evaluate, we want the value of the expression. Your answer should be a number. We want the value. Okay? You can, excuse me, you can evaluate these expressions a variety of ways. You can do them by hand. You can do them in the calculator. You can do them by hand and in the calculator. It's really up to you. But if you are going to do them by hand, you need to remember to use the order of operations, PEMDAS. So we've got parentheses, exponents, and then you do multiplication and division in order from left 
to right. Then you do addition and subtraction in order from left to right. Okay, and so when we do some examples here in just a second, I am going to use the order of operations to work out the examples just as a review for you. Okay, we're going to do the first example together. I have 5 times the quantity A plus 1, then plus 3B minus 7, and I'm given A equals 3 and B equals negative 4. So everywhere there's an A in my expression, I'm going to plug in 3, and where there's a B, I'm going to use negative 4. So that gives me 5 times the quantity. Instead of A, I'm going to use 3 plus 1. Close quantity plus I have 3. Instead of B, I have negative 4. And then minus 7. And I'm going to use the order of operations to simplify this. So first we do the parentheses. The only operation inside of parentheses we have is right here. It's 3 plus 1. We know that 3 plus 1 is 4. Okay. Now, we don't have any exponents, so we go straight to multiplication and division. We're just going to go from left to right. So 5 times 4 is 20. And then I'm not going to put a sign yet. I'm going to wait to see what happens here. This is also multiplication. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12, so I'm just going to put minus 12. And then I have a minus 7. Now, you can do this in two different steps, or you can do it all at once. I'm just going to do it all at once. But remember, you have to go from left to right. 20 minus 12 is 8. 8 minus 7 is 1. So 1 is our final answer there. Okay, I've given you four more examples. You've got an expression and then the variables are defined. I want you to pause the video and take just a minute to try these expressions, plug in those numbers for variables and see what value you get. And then once you're finished, you can start the video and check your answers with me. Okay, for number two, we have three times the quantity x plus y, which is squared, and then minus one. So instead of x, I'm going to use negative seven. Instead of y, I'm going to use two. So that's three times the quantity, negative seven plus two, squared, minus one. First, we do parentheses. Inside parentheses, I have negative seven plus two. That gives me negative five, and that's still squared, and minus one. Now, when you have a negative number squared, that's always tricky. It never fails. It throws some people off. When we square something, it means to multiply that number by itself. Okay? So negative 5 squared is negative 5 times negative 5, which is a positive 25. So that should be 3 times 25 minus 1. Now, if you were to type negative 5 squared in your calculators, at least your calculators here at school, it's going to assume that you are doing negative, five, negative 1 times 5 times 5, which would give you a negative 25, but that is not correct. Always type negative numbers in your calculator with parentheses when you are raising them to an exponent. It makes a huge difference, okay? Now... We already talked about the, it should be a positive 25. 3 times 25 is 75. Minus 1 is 74. Okay. Number 3, we have x divided by 2 plus y. So x is 5 and y is 1. So we have 5 over 2 plus y. Or Oops, not y. So sorry. Got carried away there. 5 halves plus 1, 5 halves plus 1. Now, if we just do 5 halves and 1, that's 1 and 5 halves. That's a mixed number. We don't want that. So we want, you can do it in your calculator, and it should spit out an improper fraction. Or I am going to show you how to do it by hand really quick because you need those fraction skills. So we have 5 halves. That's what we're given. The denominator is 2. So we want this whole number to turn into a fraction with the denominator 2. So what can we put on top of 2 that will simplify to 1? It's a 2. 
2 divided by 2 is the same as 1. So now that we have the same denominator, we can just add. 5 halves plus 2 halves is 7 halves. So 7 over 2 is our final answer. Okay, number 4, we have 5x squared plus y squared, where x is 2 and y is negative 3. So we have 5 times 2 squared plus negative 3 squared. Now notice, I put that negative 3 in parentheses because I'm raising it to an exponent, okay? That does make a difference, especially in the calculator. So we can skip parentheses because we don't have operations inside them. We just have those numbers, so we can go to exponents. We know 2 squared is 4, so that's 5 times 4. And we know negative 3 squared is negative 3 times negative 3, which gives us a positive 9. 5 times 4 is 20, plus 9 gives us 29. Now, number 5 is a little bit different. Um, for the problems like this in Math Excel, you're going to be given a word problem, and I think it's talking about some money and interest or something like that. And so what you're going to have to pull out of that word problem is the expression, and where T stands for time. And then you're going to be asked to figure out the interest for the number of years. So you're going to use that number of years for t, because that's your time. So for this one, we have 2,000 times the quantity 1.3 raised to the fifth power. Now, you could do this by hand, but you're probably not going to know what 1.3 to the fifth is right off the bat. So I would recommend just typing that in your calculator and seeing what you get. And for this one, you should get 7,000, oh, 7,425.86. And it is talking about money, so you can throw a dollar sign in there and um, finish that one out. I'm sorry, that one looks kind of crazy, but that's okay. You get the idea. So in your math Excel, you will have some problems where you have to evaluate expressions, but the ones on your practice should match up pretty well with your examples here. Okay, now we're gonna look at the last part of this lesson, simplifying expressions. When we're talking about simplifying expressions, basically, well, at least what we're doing today is just combining like terms. You've done that before. Um, again, that should not be something brand new to you. Some things to remember, like terms have matching variables and exponents. In order for them to be alike, the variables have to be the same, and then the exponents on those variables have to be the same. Also, remember, terms are separated by plus and minus signs. And when we're looking at a term, say I've given you 5x squared. Okay? 5 is the coefficient. The coefficient tells us how many. Okay, there's five of those. Okay, the x squared is our variable, and that tells us of what. So we have five of what? x squared. We have five x squared. That's like saying five apples or five oranges. And when we combine like terms that have exponents, okay, you keep that variable and that exponent the same, okay? So, for example, 3x squared plus 2x squared equals 5x squared, okay? That's like three apples plus three apple, or Three apples plus two apples equals five apples, okay? You can't change the variable or the exponent because that would be like saying three apples plus two apples equals five oranges, okay? That doesn't work. That doesn't make sense. And I know that's a silly analogy, um, but for some reason it usually sticks with people. So leave the variables and the exponents alone, okay? Okay. Now we're going to look at some examples of combining like terms or simplifying expressions. I'm going to do the first one with you. 
So if you look at example number one, we have 6x minus 4x plus 8 minus x. So if you just take a quick glance, you see we have some terms with x and some terms without x. So let's start with x. We have 6x, negative 4x, and negative x. So 6 minus 4 minus 1. So 6 minus 4 is 2, minus 1 is 1. So we have 1x, okay? Now, if it would help you, you can circle, box, use different colors, um, something to show what things are alike. After you combine them, you can mark them out. If that will help you, you can do a lot of different things to make combining like terms easier, especially if you're a visual learner. Okay, the other term we have, the only thing that's left is just this positive 8. It doesn't have a match. We're just going to bring it down. So we have x plus 8. We cannot combine those because this has an x and this doesn't. So that is our final answer. Now, I want you to pause the video, give the next three examples a try, see what you can come up with, and then come back with me and we'll check your answers and see how you did. Okay, number two, if you take a quick glance, you see we have something with A, some constants, and some stuff with B. You can start with whichever thing you want to. I'm going to start with A. So we have 3A and we have nothing else with an A. So I'm just going to bring that 3A down. Okay. Next, we have a constant. We have negative 2. Any other constants? Yep, we have a positive 10. Now, it's very important that you pay attention to the sign that's in front of the coefficient because you have to take that along with it, or the sign that's in front of the constant. So negative 2 plus 10 is 8. So we have plus 8. And then we've got some stuff with B. So we have a positive 5B and a positive 7B. If we add those together, we do get positive 12B. Now, that one, we've got some different variables. You can leave it in this order. You can rearrange it if you want to. As long as you have the correct terms, it doesn't matter what order they're in because it's addition. Okay, so we can't combine these any farther. So that is our final answer. Okay, number three. If you take a glance at number three, we have x's and x squared. Now, you can start with whatever's first. Or, I like to start with the biggest exponent because best practice is to put our polynomials in order from biggest exponent to smallest exponent. So, that's how I like to combine like terms. And it would be great if you got in that habit too. Um, but I'm not going to make a huge deal about that at this very moment. So, I'm going to look at x squareds first. So, I have 4x squared and 5x squared. And... Those are both positive, so positive 4, positive 5 is 9, so we have 9x squared. Then I have 3x and negative x. When I combine those, that gives me a positive 2x. And I cannot combine those because one is x squared and one is x. So that is my final answer. And I would say that this polynomial is in order because it has x squared and then x. Okay, our last one is a little bit different. We've got a fraction thrown in there, so we'll look at how to address that. Again, we have a squareds and a's, so I'm going to start with a squareds. I have 5a squared and a squared over 4, and that's the same as having 1 fourth. And I'm going to just make a little note. That's the same as having 1 fourth a squared, okay? So I'm just going to come over here to the side. And we're going to do like a little mini lesson over here. So I'm going to ignore the variables for now. I'm just, I have a 5 and I have a 1 fourth. So 5 plus 1 fourth is 5 and a fourth. Okay. We do not use mixed numbers in here. So we need an improper fraction. Okay. And we talked about that very, very quickly in our last lesson. But we'll look at it again here. You're going to do 5 times 4 because... That's the denominator, and you get 20. 
Okay. Then you're going to add the numerator, which is 1. So we have 21. And your denominator needs to match what you started with. So 21 fourths. So I'm going to use that back up here. I'm going to say I have 21a squared over 4. And then I have 4a and negative 2a. So positive 4 and negative 2 is a positive 2a. We cannot combine those any farther because one is an a squared and one is just a regular a. And that's it. So again, you have problems like this in your math Excel practice. Um, 